Do you love the movie look? Do you envy all the great YouTubers whose thumbnail looks better than your videos? And do you want to put the word cinematic next to your videos? Well, look no further. So I have my own understanding of this. This is not the industry standard way. And I'm consciously not looking up facts on Wikipedia right now. And, uh, you know, we can all Google the facts. Uh, this is my very personal take on this. And if you disagree with anything I say here, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm open to learn. As I clearly state, I'm not an expert on this. Uh, so I would love to hear what you have to say. To start, I'm going to define two terms here. Color correction and color grading are two concepts that in practice actually just meld together, mix together. But I kind of like to make a distinction between them. I would define color correction as the adjusting of exposure, highlight, shadows to sort of correct your image so that it becomes more neutral looking, more properly exposed. For example, if your footage has a very green tint or very blown out highlights, then you would naturally want to correct that. Color grading is naturally when you start to grade your colors. Now, now you have a different objective. It's to give your footage a more style or stylized look. Now you have to kind of interpret the footage to think about what it is you're actually making. Are you making a horror movie? Are you making a comedy? Are you making just YouTube entertainment? Whatever it is you're making, you want to sort of have a color grade that emphasizes that. So you can use it as a tool like that. You don't have to, of course. You can just add your personal touch. For 95% of the population, color correction is an absolute necessity. Most people are not professionals and do not have exposure meters and all the tools necessary to expose 100% correctly in camera. But I would also say that color grading is a necessary part of cinematography. So depending on what you work on, like sometimes, of course, you want a very neutral look. Uh, but for a lot of work, people want a certain style and, and color grading can help to, you know, evoke certain emotions and really set the mood. But the harsh truth here is that most of this will depend on what you're working with, how the actual footage was shot, what you have in camera. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just taking for granted here that you already have footage, which is shot in a flat color profile, a log format, preferably 10 bit footage and that it was decently exposed in camera. But I'm also in the generous corner here today, so if you want to try to color grade yourself or along with me, I have a link in the description where you can download the footage that I'm using in the video. So let's uh, dive into Premiere. There are many ways to go about this, and I'll show you two ways. One relatively quick and simple way, which works and will probably be enough for most people out there, and then a little bit more advanced way. When we have a flat log footage, then we have to add a Rec. 709 LUT to bring out all the information in the footage that was recorded. And the way we apply that is inside the settings tab inside Lumetri Color. So to the right here, in my settings, I have selected auto detect color profile. That way, Premiere will use the Rec. 709 LUT, which is the standard for my camera. So this will be a different type of LUT if you have a Sony camera or a Canon camera. I have a Panasonic Lumix camera. So this function in Premiere has now chosen this color profile for me. And this first step here is the same in the two methods I will show you here. So let's move on to the very easy way to color grade your footage. If you select your video clip inside the timeline here, you will get the option to adjust light and colors inside Lumetri Colors on that clip. I usually do some adjustments on the clip itself first. This is the step I would call color corrections and not color grading. That means fixing the white balance or temperature, uh, adjusting brightness, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, etc. But we're also going to open up Lumetri scopes on our left here. That's just to be able to see the actual data of what we're working with and not just trusting our eyes. Again. I'm not an expert here, but I've made this mistake so many times. My PC monitor is brighter than my phone or my TV, 
So what looks good on my computer doesn't always look good on other devices. We're going to use the waveform. This is just the one I primarily use. The waveform monitors luminance and chrominance levels. The scale on the left that shows 0 to 100 measures the intensity in IRE units, where 0 is black and 100 is white. The scale on the right, however, where you see 0 to 255, measures the intensity of the colors, sort of. Very simply, in this waveform you can see how bright your footage is and how the color in your footage spreads out between the red, green and blue. Okay, let's start adjusting. As you can see here, this shot has more red than green and blue which is only natural, it has a lot of skin tone. But for example, when I adjust the temperature here, you can see how the red shifts in lumetri scopes. As I've also said, when I'm correcting color, I'm trying to find a neutral look. Nothing stylized yet. And when I'm happy with the corrections or adjustments on the footage, I'll create an adjustment layer. I'll right click here in the project tab and then click new item and click adjustment layer and then I'll click OK and I'll drag that adjustment layer above the footage. On this adjustment layer, I'll add what's known as a LUT. If you don't know what it is, it's a pre-made filter. And Adobe Premiere has some pre-installed LUTs, and I actually often end up using some of these. So I'll go to Lumetri Colors, and I'll click where it says Creative. And then where it says Look, I can scroll down and find a LUT that I like. Or I can click the arrow that's pointing to the right here, and then left click the preview image to add the LUT to the footage. So now I'm just trying out different LUTs to see what style I like best. You can choose whatever you like. Now we've moved more into the color grading space. After adding the LUT, I can sometimes go back to the basic correction and adjust the footage some more, just to find a look that I like. Back in the creative space, I can also adjust the intensity of the LUT or the pre-made filter. That just means how strong the LUT should affect your footage. And I have some other settings here as well. I usually only adjust the vibrance, saturations, and sometimes the shadow and highlight tint here. Here I can also look at Lumetri scopes to see how the color spreads out in my footage when I'm adjusting colors. But be aware that now I'm stylizing it, so my goal now is not to make something neutral. So even though the door in the background is white, maybe I want to give the background a little tint. Maybe a green tint or a blue tint. And this brings me to a very critical part of this video. In the footage I'm using, we can clearly see skin tone. And what's very common in films today is to make the skin tone of the actors pop out and separate from the background. And there's a specific technique on how to do that. Well, if you can see the shadow tint and highlight tint here, you have a color spectrum. And if you notice, orange is on the exact opposite side of blue or teal or cyan. Well, in a lot of movies today, they will try to enhance the skin tone in the footage by giving the background a cyan or blue tint and sometimes make the skin tone a little bit warmer. Some people call this the orange and teal look. But inside the creative section here, the adjustments are a bit limited. I can, however, try and select a bluish tint for the shadows and a more orange tint on the highlights. And I can also adjust the tint balance here, like where on the spectrum should the balance between the shadow tint and highlight tint be. So yeah, I can be happy with this. This is a very, very quick edit. It's not insane, but it certainly has a more distinct look than before. The background is not as white and clean as before. It's a bit more grittier. So depending on what it is you're actually making here, this could work. But let's move on to the more advanced settings. I'm gonna remove the tint and go back to the more neutral look, but I'll keep the LUT I added in the adjustment layer. I'll add another adjustment layer above the first adjustment layer. Then in Lumetri Color, I'll go into HSL Secondary. This tool allows me to adjust colors more precisely. So I'll use the eyedrop tool. Left click that and then left click somewhere in the image that has skin tone. So we haven't really made any adjustments yet, but we have made a selection and you can view the selection you have made if you check this box here next to color slash gray. To be more specific, what we've done is single out which color we want to adjust, but this selection is too rough. So we need to add more of the skin tones into the selection. 
that means we need to add all the shadows and highlights of my face as well. So to do that, we use the eyedrop tool with the plus sign to the right of it. We left click that and then left click on the different parts of my face to add more into the selection. What's great about this tool is that we can also adjust the selection by moving these HSL sliders, hue, saturation and lightness. We can increase the size of the marker in the slider to include more of, for example, lightness and shadows within that hue selection. And we can play around with this until we find a selection that we think is more workable. For the last part here, you can see a lot of small pixels or what I call jitter in the selection. We can add some denoise to get some of the jitter away and also blur the selection a little bit to make the edges softer. You can really play around with all the settings to select the specified color that you want to adjust. Once you're happy with your selection, we can start adjusting those colors in your selection and only those. This is really useful. So if you see under correction here, you'll see a small circle and then three circles next to it. Left click that and three circles with color spectrums will pop up. One for shadows, one for midtones and one for highlights. The slider to the left of the circles adjusts the brightness or intensity. And then you can left click into the color circle to add a color tone to either the shadows, midtones or highlights. So I'm adjusting the different settings to my liking. And when I'm pleased with how my skin tones look, then the next step is to start adjusting the background. But to do this, we want to inverse the selection we just made so that we adjust the background and not the skin tones. What we do then is we duplicate the adjustment layer that we are working on now. To duplicate your layer, you can hold Alt, then left click and hold, then drag your adjustment layer above this one. When you have your new adjustment layer, select it, and in the HSL secondary section, you can click the box to the right of where it says color slash gray. This will inverse the selection. And now we have an adjustment layer that only adjusts the background. You can do this right after you made your selection at the start here, so that you don't need to reset the color adjustments on this layer. But basically what you wanna do here is give the background adjustment layer a more bluish look and maybe darken it a bit. And here you'll also see how your skin tones contrast to the background. So you can go back to your skin tone adjustment layer and make more adjustments there. So as you can see, this is a very different looking image than the first one. I will of course recommend that people learn the more advanced technique, but for a lot of people, the first one will be enough. And you can find a lot of different LUTs out there that will make your life easier. The only problem with relying too heavily on pre-made LUTs is that they're not really tailored for all types of footage out there. Even though you shoot in a log format and expose correctly, that doesn't mean that you can slap on a LUT and get a cinematic looking shot. Most likely, you'll have to make adjustments. And if you can, I would really recommend learning to use HSL secondary in Lumetri Color because you get so much selective control of your colors. There you go. Now you have another tool in your toolbox to make your footage look a little bit better. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. So uh, yeah, subscribe. Come.